You're crazy. Am I? Yes. Am I? Yes. Am I? Here we go again. As the country is looking to go into lockdown for a second time round, it seems quite, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Inevitable, that's it. Right. Um, as the government say that the rising numbers of coronavirus is of concern and it's most likely that if people don't adhere to the rules, the lockdowns and the staying in the home and all those things there, right, that their government are going to have to put us in lockdown again, right? Now, <laughs> you're not right. The first thing I have to think was this, yeah. Now, my spidey sense is all, all, we're all kind of all over the place at the minute, yeah, right. But something telling me that there's something afoot with this whole coronavirus thing from the get go, right. But playing on the side of caution. You know what I mean? They've got statistics and facts and figures to show otherwise that the coronavirus thing is seriously a issue, a pandemic, as they call it. Then, you know what I mean? I'm going to go with the flow because at the end of the day, it's the government. Why would they lie? <laughs> right. But again, like I said, in the back of my head, I'm still thinking something ain't right here, though, still. Right. Now, the first of all, the thing I would like to kind of like address when I heard this kind of like report and you know it's been reported on the news daily now right the first thing i say is this <laughs> right with this rising numbers yeah is that due to people catching colds and getting flus or is it the coronavirus because we know that anyone that goes anywhere that has a bit of a temperature or feels a little bit oh i feel a bit faint you got the rona it's the rona right so, I'm thinking to myself, well, hold on a second. It's autumn now. Or it's beginning, you know, it's autumn. Summer done gone. We didn't have much of a summer, but it's done gone, right? And just because you can see an inkling of sunshine peek through two clouds, don't mean that it's warm outside. The minute you step, I go outside all the time, going when I pop through shopping in Geneva, and I've noticed that there's been a drop in the temperature. Now, I, go, I put a coat on now, yeah? Yeah, the sun's beaming outside, but it's still, ooh, chilly, isn't it? <laughs> right? So, I'm thinking when you when I'm outside and I see people still walking around in t-shirts and stuff just because the sun's come out, right? Well, of course they're gonna get sniffles and little things like that. And I know that people now, as a black person, right? I know that the people say that we're being superstitious or um, scientifically you can't catch a cold from being cold, right? Well, you know what? I've always, you know, but my mum and the way I was raised is, look, we go outside, you put on a t-shirt, you put on something there, keep warm, right? Because you get that ch chill in your bones. That's how shit goes. Just a bit like hypothermia. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Just because, is it hypothermia? You know, with the one way if you jump into icy water and then you come out again and you, you <laughs> right? You know what I mean? The way that, what, what we've been told or how I, I've grown up is the, is the same thing with the coldness outside or when it's raining and shit. People say, oh, you can't catch a cold from getting wet. Yeah, seriously? All right, then. You, uh, you stood it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm thinking, well, first of all, is it, you know, is it down to the weather? You know what I mean? Because different, you know, changes in climate and all them things there affect people in different ways. So is this, you know what I mean? So is it the weather that is giving people these little colds and sniffles and flu-like symptoms that has been diagnosed as the Rona, which is giving us this surge of numbers? Because remember, we've just gone from one season to another. That's one possibility. I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but I'm just putting my opinion out there. Right. Uh, secondly, right. The government aren't actually helping themselves at all with all this curfew nonsense. Right. Because the minute you put a curfew on anything or you, or you timestamp something, yeah. All you're doing is making people congregate at that time. Simple as. Yeah. That's why you have things like the rush hour. Yeah, it was between 8 and 9 o'clock or from 5 to 6 to 7 o'clock, depending on where you live. Yeah, that's when people are either leaving or going to somewhere. Yeah, and there's a timestamp on it. Just like when you go to the pictures and the pictures at a matinee at 8.30 or whatever, you'll find that at come, come 8.30, the cinema foyer is packed. Come 8.45, it's dead. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? So putting all these curfews on shit don't make no sense. It'd be met, like, especially like with the pub one. Right, it would make more sense if they let the pub stay open until later, 
and let the people come in waves because I worked in the pub industry here and talking to the staff and talking to the owners of the pubs, they'll say that how it normally tends to work is that the people that come at maybe, let's say, in the afternoon or in the evening, early evening, you're going to find oh, the ones who are just leaving work, they've decided, you know, right, let's pop, pop into the pub for a cheeky one before we go home or, more, or maybe just grab something to eat quickly and have a cheeky one before we go home. They'll go in about, what, six, six o'clock, depending on what time they finish work, but they'll get to the pub for about six, six thirty and they'll tend to leave by about eight, eight thirty, nine o'clock. And then you've got the other crowd of people that have gone home first, decided, oh, what should we do? Maybe go to a restaurant and get something to eat or cook at home, get something to eat and then film. Oh, you know, let, let's go for a cheeky one. And then that crowd will normally get there about, what, maybe the 8.30, 9 o'clock or maybe even 9.30 and stay until closing time. So then you had a wave of people go, coming and going. So there's not a big one congregation. So by putting a curfew one at 10 o'clock, yeah, what you'll tend to find is the people that went in there early, they'll just stay. And then the people that went who who decided to go later, they'll try and get as much in as they can. But then what you'll tend to find is that come 10 o'clock, everybody's out there at the same time trying to get a cab home or trying to get the bus home. So this curfew nonsense, they just to me, they just didn't think that through. Yeah, like a lot of the policies that have come into, right? You know what I mean? Locking down the kids in the university. Oh, you can't go nowhere for two weeks. Right? <laughs> oh, dear. And then, again, this is to me why I think there's something afoot, right? Because it seems strange to me that they're telling people to stay in their home. Don't go nowhere. You're spreading the virus, right? And then, but then at the same time, they're saying that statistically, you're most likely to get infected at home. So then where the hell are you supposed to go? Where are you supposed to be? Yeah? You've got to go to work. You know what I mean? Because obviously you've got to earn a living and a thing. Yeah? So the minute you step outside your house, you're more, you know, the, the, in my opinion anyway, the minute you step outside your house, whether you've got a mask on or not, you're most likely to come into co some contact with someone that could possibly have it. And if you come into contact with someone that's possibly have it, you're going to carry it around with you all day and still take it home. Yeah? So what are you saying? So what are the government trying to say? Once you step outside the house, you can't go back in again. <laughs> Come on now, right? <laughs> um, so, which leads me to stop putting my tin foil hat on and start thinking about the conspiracy theory side of the game. Like, you know what I mean? And I do, I do like a good conspiracy theory. You know what I mean? And um, you know, they, there's a saying that there's one more than more than one way to skin a cat, right? And it leads back to the um, identity chip thing. Yeah where they say, remember years ago, or yeah, a couple of years ago, I think they were talking about, you know, installing identity chips into people so they can monitor them and, you know, we know you wear about some people just, nah, 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 we ain't having that, mate, right? <laughs> we ain't having that, right? Um, it's one of those ones where now, uh, okay, everyone, most people have, mo have have got a mobile phone. And the other day I got my NHS um, uh, message, main message from the NHS, you know what I mean? Uh, download this app. Now I don't know what that app's going to do. I don't know what apps. Gonna, you know, you know, no. Who's going to really read? I should really read the terms and conditions, but you know, I'm not going to. But I'm not sure what the app can do. I don't know what it's going to be monitoring. You know what I mean? Monitoring? No. We're chasing my. Now I've already. I think most people have already come to um, agreement or have come to accept the fact that the mobile phone can track you and get wherever you're going. Right. But why does it, and this to me just seems like a, a next step up. Just like with a Siri, you know, if you've got a Siri in your house, people have been complaining, right, that, you know, Siri's been doing some weird stuff because you could be sitting there having a conversation and a word that you say might sound like Siri and then it activates it. And the next thing you know, it's, you know, it's making all kind of inquiries, you know. And again, conspiracy theory is time. But again, it wouldn't pass, it wouldn't, it wouldn't put it, it wouldn't put it past me, so to speak. You know what I mean? Because I think there's something afoot with this whole corona thing, right? Or it might not have started that way, but opportunities or, or opportunists have seen ways in which they can make money and a shed load of it at the same time. Yeah. And things like that don't surprise me when it comes to the government. You know what I mean? 
Um, one other thing that I wanted to talk about quickly as well was uh, I'm gonna do it for another video still. The whole school thing, um, the teaching of oh, um, now nah, you know I'll leave that for another video. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below, right? Um, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I'm out. Yes. Am I? Yes. Am I? Yes.